Hello, welcome to lesson 65, Async and Await in C Sharp, brought to you by Ankpro Technologies. My name is Arish. In this session, we are going to learn one of the most important feature and the developer friendly feature that is Async and Await. And this Async and Await keywords were added in the C Sharp version 5. And before understanding the Async and Await keywords, let us understand what is asynchronous programming or asynchronous way of coding. Why do we need asynchronous code first of all? We need asynchronous code to make our applications responsive and to avoid the performance issues. That's what the need of async asynchronous code. Now, writing asynchronous code was not an easy to the developers. So, uh, C Sharp version 5 came up with the new important keywords and the wonderful keywords called async and await to make uh, or to write uh, the asynchronous code in the easy way in the easy manner okay now before starting an example I would like to discuss the two master keywords in the asynchronous programming they are async and await now let us understand what is async uh, async keywords for example if you are having a method and if you want to make that method as an asynchronous method the one thing you have to do is in front of that method you have to add the async keyword that's it for example you can observe I'm having a method called method one if I want to make this method one as an asynchronous method, what I've done here is I've just added this async keyword in front of it. That's it. Now you can call this method one asynchronously at any point of time. That's what the importance of async keyword. And right now let us understand what await is. Very similar to wait, obviously, yes. This keyword is used when we want to call any function asynchronously in the sense if you're having a function and if you want to call that function asynchronously, then what we have to do is we have to use this await keyword. For example, you are, you are, you are, here you are having a method 2 and if I wish to call this method 2 asynchronously then what I have to do is here I am calling this method 2 in front of that I, I want to add the await keyword. Now this method 2 will be called asynchronously. That's all. That's all. That's what the importance of method uh, async and await keywords. Right now we will understand the next part. Okay. Now what is this asynchronous method is going to return? It's going to return the three types. Okay. One it can be it can return void and it can return the task and the task of generic type. Keep in mind asynchronous method can return only of three types. It can return the void means it does not return anything and it can return the task and the task of generic type. And that's what what that's what the asynchronous method is going to return. Okay. Now without wasting much time let us jump into coding. Now what I'll do is uh, let me create some method private static void I'll name it as method method 1 okay now in this method 1 um, what I'll do is first let me create a method 2 method but my method 2 is going to return integer so let me add integer here okay but uh, what I'm going to do in method 2 is if someone calls this method 2 uh, it has to get delayed by 5 seconds so what I'll do is I'll just add a thread to do that work thread dot sleep when I use thread dot sleep my method will be delayed by 5 seconds in the sense 5 milliseconds here okay and it will return finally uh, the integer so I'll return one year okay in the sense if someone calls this method 2 it is going to get delay by 5,000 5, milliseconds in the sense 5 seconds and later after the 5 seconds it's going to return 1 to the calling method okay now what I'll do uh, I'll call this method 2 in the method 1 itself so um, method 2 here itself but um, this method 2 is going to return an integer so let me assign it to some variable okay and let me print that value I'll just type your output of uh, method 2 what is that variable storing the value its variable name is value itself okay now what I'll do uh, in the main program I'll add a meaningful sentence telling like uh, program execution begins execution begins okay and later what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this method one okay and now what I'll do is I'll add for loop I'll tell you why I'm adding for loop here 
and the length is 5 okay and it's going to print high okay and let me add on console dot read line take the input from the user okay now let me run this piece of code you can observe something happening here program execution begins and the cursor is blinking and later it prints like output of method to one and the for loop gets executed but but what happened if you observe correctly um, now the program what happened here is in the main method it's the execution part of the program here it comes and prints the program execution begins when I run the program and later the cursor starts blinking and why it blinks is next it reaches the method one when it reaches when it goes to the definition of method one you can observe I'm calling method two here okay but later the uh, letter is jumps to method 2 but in method 2 what we are doing is we are explicitly making it to wait for 5 seconds and later we are returning the value 1 okay so what happens is the method 1 will wait until the method 2 execution completes so the for loop the next part next piece of code is not getting executed but this should not happen in the real world application so what I have to do is what I have to do here is I I should not make make this for loop to wait until the method one execution completes in spite of that what should happen is the first line will get executed that is program execution begins and later when it comes here to the method one method one will go to method two and method two will make the method one to wait but uh, what I have to do here is I, I don't want the for loop to wait for the method two to get com method one to get completed. So how to do that? That's what we call asynchronous coding or synchronous programming. And what we how we can resolve this is we can solve this by using the async and await keywords. How? For example, and this is the method which is get delaying so let us make this method as asynchronous method how to make asynchronous method as I said earlier we want to just add the async keyword and okay now you can observe here this method is getting delayed by some seconds five seconds so what I have to do is to this method too I want to add the await keyword okay now and this method is going to return the integer so let me add a task as we learned as we learned uh, in the slide uh, asynchronous method is going to return three types one is void task and task of generic type so let me add a task of generic type here int okay but the way it returns it differs here return uh, task dot run once it is running okay what it has to do is it has to goes to um, okay it has to thread it has to delay by some 5 milliseconds okay then it has to return finally 1 okay and let me put it in the correct manner such that you can understand the code very easily okay okay now let me remove the dot now what I do I just altered this piece of code by using two important and uh, two uh, important keywords that is async and await okay if this method is making the for loop to wait so uh, what I did is I make I made this method as asynchronous method by adding the async keyword and later uh, later in this method one I'm calling the method two but that method two is getting delayed by five seconds so I what I'm doing is I'm adding await keyword because this is asynchronous method which is making us to wait so I'm having adding a wait keyword in front of method 2 okay now what happens is let me explain you now the program execution begins and it executes the first line successfully program execution begins and later with when it jumps to method 1 what happens is uh, here it comes to the definition then it turn then in turn it calls the method 2 since the method 2 is async okay uh, as the method 2 uh, is marked with the await keyword it starts its execution in an asynchronous mode and suspends the further execution it does not print this it suspends the further execution of the method one and immediately it returns to the calling statement here and without printing the message in the next line okay and now what it does is um, it it comes to the main function and it will allow the for loop to execute 
okay and once the method one or method two execution completes it will print that message at the last okay now this is how we resolved it in, in spite of making the for loop uh, making making the for loop to wait for method one to complete what we did was we made for loop to print first and later once the method one uh, execution is completed it will print at the last and that's what we achieved using the async and await keyword right now let me run this piece of code you can observe the program execution begins and the for loop gets executed in spite of waiting for the method one to complete and that can be achieved using the asynchronous programming using the two beautiful keywords called async and await okay and that's what we learned in this session and finally thank you for listening have a great day please subscribe to our youtube channel ankpro training and don't forget to give the feedback